question. How many people here can draw? Raise your hand. Looks like maybe 10% of you or so. So in about 10 minutes, I'm going to ask that same question again. And my goal between now and then is to teach you all everything you need to know about drawing by way of five quick lessons so that when I do ask that question again, you and everyone around you enthusiastically thrust your hands into the air. <laughs> How does that sound? Does that sound like something we'd like to do? Fantastic. So there's no pressure on you. Pressure is all on me. <laughs> There's an old saying, the first step in learning is unlearning. Today's first lesson is unlearning the untrue observation that most of you just made about yourself, and that is that you cannot draw. Recently, I asked my son Enzo's fourth grade class the same question. Here's what they had to say. So, question for everyone. Uh, how many people here can draw? Raise your hand. Yeah, okay, excellent, excellent. So, <laughs> so why is it that those fourth graders had such a different response than all of you? Were they lying? <laughs> were they just trying to impress me? No, I simply asked, can you draw? And they were like, well, duh, Mr. Enzo's dad, of course I can draw. Check out my fridge at home. Check out the drawings hanging in the hallway. And I'll bet if I asked you that question when you were in fourth grade, you would have raised your hand too. So what happened? Did you all lose the ability to draw? Well, I'll tell you what I think happened. I think you heard the question wrong. I think what you heard me ask is, how many people here can draw well? Raise your hand. Which is why you didn't raise your hand. And I think you heard the question in this way because sometime during your formative years, probably around middle school, you were taught two things about drawing that are not true. You were taught that um, really only artistic types can draw, right? And you were taught that drawing is not an important life skill. Today's first lesson is about letting go of the idea that you cannot draw because you think you cannot draw well. You can draw. And that brings us to today's second lesson, the ABCs of drawing. When we were young and just learning to read and write, we were taught the alphabet. Powerful system, the alphabet. If you know your ABCs, there's not a thing or a concept in the universe that you cannot come to express through words. Well, drawing is the same way. There's a set of elemental marks. And if you know what they are, there's not a thing or a concept in the universe that you cannot express through form. And the cool thing is, there's only 26 of them. There are only five. They are the dot, the line, the ellipse, the triangle, and the rectangle. If you can make these basic marks, which I know you can, you can draw just about anything. And that's because everything is sort of made up of these basic forms, right? We see dots in the flecks of snow and the spots on a ladybug. We encounter lines in the veins of a leaf, or the contrails of a jet streaking across the sky. We come face to face with all manner of ellipses every day, the rim of a cup, a beautiful spider web, and beautiful faces. And then, while triangles are harder to spot, if you pay attention, you'll recognize them in the distance, or in the space between things, or as a nose, and right under your nose. And while you won't find too many rectangles in nature, you will find them in just about everything man has made. Walls, buildings, the technology we use every day. And if you squint a bit, simplified versions of the human form. Drawing is about seeing a bit differently and then just translating what we see. Once you know this, you can draw just about anything. A slice of pizza, smartphones, dumb phones, <laughs> bears, bear markets, <laughs> and, and not just nouns, adjectives like happy and sad or cold and confused, and verbs like to collaborate or to iterate. 
can also be made from these, using these five essential marks. And just like you can combine words to, 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 uh, to, to form more elaborate stories, well, so too can we combine the things that we draw to form more elaborate narratives. Now, there's a post-it pad and a pen in your bag. I want you to grab it, and let's do a quick draw along to practice our ABCs. All right? And together, we are going to draw this bear. All right? Now, I know what you're thinking. Don't be frightened by his perceived complexity. All right? Remember, the first step is seeing a bit differently. It's about seeing these essential forms in what we're looking at or what we imagine in our minds and then translating that. And let's do that together on the small sticky pad, okay? And let's together, let's draw an ellipse about that big to represent his head, okay? Got that? And then two smaller ellipses here and here for his ears, right? And then two smaller ellipses still here and about there for his eyes, yeah, got that? And another ellipse for his nose, and then two more ellipses inside of that for his nostrils. Now, his snout is really just a rectilinear shape, isn't it? Drawn sort of like this, right? And the mouth, another small rectangle just under the nose like that. Hmm? And now if we draw a line on the left and then another line on the right, we've defined his body. And for detail, let's shade in some of his facial features ears, his eyes, right? maybe the nose, and the mouth. And then if you'd like, just add some lines like these here to represent the texture of hair on his body. Everybody got that? Yeah? Voila, a hairy, not so scary bear. <laughs> Lesson number two is know your ABCs of drawing. Drawing is first and foremost a form of communication. Today's third lesson is about using words and symbols to clarify what you're trying to say. Now, I know that may sound like cheating, but it's really not. Just as illustrations are used in books to clarify the meaning of the words on the page, well, remember this drawing? So too can a well-placed symbol or emoji or noun or verb be used to clarify what you're trying to say in your drawings. As this drawing made long ago by Christopher Robin illustrates, it's okay to annotate your drawings to help make your point. Speaking of points, our fourth lesson is about using something called point of view in your drawings to give people what's called a frame of reference to help them interpret what it is you're trying to say. For example, these drawings here are drawn from what's called the bird's eye view, and it's a great point of view to use when you're trying to describe the design of an overall place or space, right? Or you could use something that is called the cinematic point of view, like these storyboards, which in one frame zoom in to reveal details, and in another frame zoom back out to provide context, like a movie. It's a great point of view to use when you're trying to tell a story or describe a human experience. Or you could use something I call the God's eye view, like this diagram of how a business model works. In the God's eye view, the person, the viewer that is, is sort of omnipresent, right? Um, things are arranged conceptually rather than spatially, and events happen all at once. And it's a great point of view when you're trying to describe something abstract, like a system or a process or a policy. Lesson number four is that there are three points of view that you can employ or draw upon when drawing. Now, before I share the fifth and final lesson, let me pause and, as promised, ask you the same question I asked when I walked out on stage. How many people here can draw? Raise your hand. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yes, of course you can draw. You have unlearned that you cannot draw. You now know the ABCs of drawing. 
I've given you permission to use words and symbols to clarify what you're trying to say, and I've shared three points of view you can draw upon when drawing. Now, let me ask you the question you thought I originally asked. How many people here can draw really well? Raise your hand. Uh, some of you, of course. Yeah, I see. And hey, it's OK if you didn't raise your hand. One can really only get good at something by doing it. Well, now that you all know how to draw, today's fifth and final lesson is to put you on a path to learn how to draw really well. And that lesson is draw. If you can find reason to draw in your everyday life, you will learn how to draw really, really well. Trust me. Now, there are many reasons to draw, but there are two reasons that I think are most relevant to everybody here today. And that is when you want to understand something or you want to envision something. Understanding has to do with making sense of the way things are. This is called science. And in today's complex world, I'll bet there are a dozen things that are important to you or your work that you don't quite understand. For example, who are all the stakeholders in our line of work? What do they do? What do they need? How do they relate to one another? Well, you could go talk to them and draw something called a stakeholder map to represent what you've learned. Or how does photosynthesis work again? If you want to test whether your students understand something, have them draw it. Trust me, if they can draw it, they understand it. And as I mentioned, the other reason to draw is when you want to envision a preferred future state. This is called design. And in today's broken world, drawing is a great way for you and your team to envision how things could be better. For example, how might we improve the employee onboarding process at work? Well, reimagine it through a storyboard. How might we get more people out there to vote? Well, come up with some great ideas, draw a poster, and present it to others for feedback. Today's lecture wasn't learning how to draw in order to impress your family and friends. It was about amplifying a way of communicating that we pressed the mute button on long ago. I find all of these drawings absolutely beautiful because they represent the thinking and observations and understanding and ideas and vision of people who have something very important to share. Yes, you can draw, so draw, and become fluent in the language of form. Thank you. <laughs>